The process starts with raw rubber, which is supplied to the factory in long strips. There are about 100 different types of rubber to choose from. In this case, it's natural rubber. To color it, workers add pigment tablets while the rubber is in the mill. The mill mixes and heats the raw rubber until it becomes soft and smooth. Next, they bring the batch of rubber to a calendar, which cuts the rubber into long strips of a specific width and thickness. The strips pass over large cooling rollers, and then they can be wound into production rolls. The rolls are interleaved with transparent polyliner film to prevent the rubber layers from sticking together during storage. Many clients order custom-made rubber hoses with built-in attachments. Attachment sizes vary from one job to the next, so workers double-check their dimensions before starting production. They start building the actual hose. They first insert the attachments on a mandrel. The size of the mandrel determines the hose's inside diameter. The position of the attachments determines the length of the hose, which can be up to 15 meters long. The hose builder mounts the mandrel in the hose building machine. Then he wraps a strip of rubber around the spinning mandrel. He works at an angle, so it slightly overlaps. He uses several layers to get the right overall thickness. He applies four layers of rubber-coated synthetic fabric. This high-strength fabric reinforces the hose walls, so they don't burst under pressure. Finer strips of rubber-coated fabric provide extra strength around the attachments. Next, he wraps the hose very tightly with a high-strength nylon tape. This expels any air, squeezing the rubber layers together. After a few minutes, he removes the nylon tape. He wraps a carbon steel wire around the hose, which will prevent kinking and keep the hose from collapsing under vacuum pressure. Another layer of fabric makes the hose more pliable, and the exterior of the hose is covered with fire-resistant textile tape. He wraps the hose tightly with wet nylon tape. This tape will later shrink and compress all the materials together. He wraps it in rope to create corrugations before adding yet another layer of wet shrinkable nylon tape to hold that rope in place. This hose is now ready for a crucial manufacturing step, the vulcanization process. Vulcanization is the chemical reaction that cures raw rubber and gives it elasticity. To vulcanize the rubber, they heat the hose in an autoclave. They heat the rubber at 150 degrees Celsius for an hour, or up to several hours for larger hoses. The autoclave is closed tightly. The heat inside not only vulcanizes rubber, it also shrinks the nylon tape around the hose, compressing the layers together. Once the hose has come out and cooled down for a few hours, they can remove the nylon tape. Workers use a machine that unrolls, washes, and rewinds the tape. That tape only shrinks temporarily when it's wet and exposed to heat. When it comes out of the autoclave, it regains its original shape so they can reuse the same tape on later jobs. To remove the hose from the mandrel, they tie one end with a rope and create pressure by gently pumping soapy water between the mandrel and the rubber. The hose separates easily. All they have to do now is slide the hose off the mandrel with the help of the conveyor belt. Workers will now trim the ends and cut the hose to the length the customer ordered. In the shipping department, they check the dimensions of the finished hose one last time. They measure the bore size and the outside diameter to make sure it corresponds to the customer's order. They finish by coiling and packaging the hose for delivery. Although a hose might look simple from the outside, it can be made of up to 30 layers of different materials in order to withstand the harshest industrial environments.